Hey, you're gorgeous. I wanted to talk to you about what happens when you are emotionally triggered. Something happened to me a couple of days ago, and I wanted to talk about my experience of being emotionally triggered and the impact it had on me and the people I was with at the time. Okay, so remember, if you like this content, please subscribe, hit that notification bell so you can get reminders of when new content is released. And this channel is absolutely 100% if you are a woman who is highly motivated, wants to be more connected with self, have clear direction, make a much bigger impact in your life and your family's life, then this channel is absolutely for you. So let's talk about emotional triggers. Emotional triggers can absolutely take the wind out of your sails. They can, you can be happy one second and then something will happen and you will slip back into a negative pattern of behavior. Okay, that's all sounding a little bit technical. So what does that actually mean? Let me give you a live raw example of something that I experienced a couple of days ago, which took me by surprise. The trigger was that, you know, you get those little devices from the bank, you have to type in your, your key number, or then you have to put it in your online banking, and then you can get access to your bank and everything's hunky dory. From there, you can transfer your money, do whatever it is that you want to do. Well, I've had my key card. I've been location dependent for a couple of years. So I've had my key card probably for about two and a half years. And of course, I'm in the city of Bangkok at the moment. So I'm not at home. <laughs> I'm not at home. I'm away from where it is that I would normally be staying in Thailand. And I got my key card ready to transfer some money and did the little touchpad. And I was like, oh no, it's not working. Oh crap. Um, we tried lots of different ways to warm it up. You know, when you warm a battery, you rub it between your hands. We tried everything blowing on it. <laughs> I was praying, um, but it didn't work. So what that did for me is it started very quickly a the brain reminding me of different situations of a time when I had no money. So I became emotionally triggered. I went instantly back into survival mode, which is exactly where I don't want to be. And I work very hard to move myself out of survival mode on a daily basis basis. So what happened was I got emotionally triggered by this little key card not working for me the same way that it would normally work. So instantly my mood changed. I started to emotionally close down. I started to emotionally withdraw. My mood had completely changed. I felt heavy, I felt disconnected, I'd really gone back into my shell, felt unable to speak, unable to express myself. I felt like, in those moments, a completely different person, because that little incident of not being able to get my, my money key card to work triggered a reaction that I wasn't quite expecting. So I closed down, I didn't want to talk, you know, I felt stressed, I felt alone. I'm just referring to my notes so I don't forget. I felt overly anxious. And this didn't just go on for a couple of minutes, this went on for about 24 hours, for a couple of days. And I found myself slipping into thinking about what the worst case scenario could be. So being in survival mode, you're always looking for the route out. You're always looking for the next step. You always try and be one step ahead of yourself. The brain goes into complete overload, trying to think of a way to get yourself out of the situation. So I started to catastrophize. 
and I started to think about the worst case scenario. I started to think about, you know, what happens if I forget? You know what it's like when you ring the online banking center and they're like, ask you this whole set of questions. I never get them right. I always mess up. Then I always have to go into the bank and I have to, um, you know, you have to reset whatever it is they need to reset and they have to see you. So I'm starting to think about, oh, my God, what happens when I ring them? I'm not going to be able to remember my passwords. I'm not going to be able to remember the um, information, the answers to the questions, because we've all messed up doing this, right? I'm not alone in that. Let me know in the comments box if you've ever experienced that, where you've been on the phone to your bank and you've just forgotten whatever the information is that you need to remember. You've had your clothes your account froze and you've had to go into the bank and you've had to, you know, reset whatever it is. So I was starting to think about the worst case scenario, really jumping ahead of really jumping ahead of myself. What happens if I forget the past, you know, the answers to the questions? What happens if my bank freezes? What happens if I can't get access to any money? I'm going to have to go home and sort it out. You know, going home isn't just like a couple of hours trip. It means going from Thailand to the UK. And then I started thinking about, oh, my God, I might have to quarantine. And that's a whole bulk of money. And so I went right down this rabbit hole very quickly. Very, It was like one after the other, after the other, after the other, after the other. That quick. It's how quick my brain was thinking because I had been emotionally triggered and I was slipping back into a negative pattern of behavior, which I've worked so hard to navigate and move out of. Um, calling the bank, I think for most people, stresses most people out, regardless of financial situations. And I think being dyslexic makes it even tougher because we never remember those things even if we write them down, we might forget where we've put them. Um, so I had emotionally closed down and I'd emotionally closed down and withdrawn myself and gone deep with inside myself. And that, of course, affects the people around you. It affects your relationships because they're left wondering what the hell is going on? You know, what, where's Wendy gone? What, what's going on? What's created that change? And of course, they don't know about the experiences that you've had and they don't know that you've been emotionally triggered. So they don't know how to handle you or the situation, which can be tricky in itself, which can create more trauma is the wrong word, but it can create more negativity, more it makes it much more it makes an emotional trigger much more difficult to handle so I felt you know disconnected I felt incredibly disappointed with myself so I started to beat myself up emotionally because I thought that I'd dealt with this level of baggage but I obviously hadn't so I was busy beating myself up saying negative things to myself I was becoming more fearful. I felt alone. So all of this, it's a, basically an illusion, which is what's playing out in your head that's creating your behavior. And that is based on something that has happened in the past that has been quite traumatic. So I created the Conscious Coaching Reflective Toolbox and part of my daily routine within that to help me manage emotional triggers and I have to say I haven't been emotionally triggered for a long time this is the first time in a long time where I've actually gone back into the loop back into the emotional vortex and got a bit stuck <laughs> I'm gonna be honest I got a bit stuck <laughs> so when I started to do my daily journaling exercise which helps me manage my emotions and keeps me on track I realized that there are a couple of things that have happened in my past that would create that level of emotional, 
I was going to say destruction, disconnect. Destruction is the wrong word, although it can be quite destructive if you allow it to continue over a period of time. If it was going on for weeks, it would be pretty destructive. You'd be pretty much on self-destruct. There are a couple of things that played out when I was journaling. And one of the things I hadn't actually remembered. And the first one was, is that I have, a, I, if I'm not careful, will revert back to a poverty mindset. So I was brought up in care. I have, you know, we never had any money. Uh, I never understood money. The, there's a whole load of stuff that has gone on in my childhood, in my early teens, and followed me through probably into my early 20s that I was in a place of survival, didn't have any money, didn't know how to manage money. It was a very, very scary time. So that's one event which was very traumatic. I'm not going to lie, that was very traumatic in a very difficult time of my life. Then there was another time that I'd completely forgot about, which I think adds just another layer onto those experiences as a young woman. And that was that my self and my partner, we were coming back from Thailand. We stayed at Dubai in a hotel in Dubai and my I think it's HSBC card um stopped working I don't know whether I've done the wrong code I can't remember why it stopped working but there was money in the account so that shouldn't have been a problem but the card stopped working and we hadn't paid the hotel bill we still had three days in Dubai and we rang the bank they didn't come back to us so we had no access to to money for three days all we had was the money in our pocket that was it um so that was another event that i'd had experienced whereby it was a very stressful event so my brain when this little key card stopped working instantly went back into those experiences and then created this level of emotional detachment and I didn't realize until I started journaling that I had closed down that I slipped back into negative behavior that I had been an emotional event had been triggered and I was responding I was going back into survival mode going back into myself and closing down not quite knowing what to do um, real victim type behavior but understandably so because of the experiences is it because of the experiences it is that i have had that is perf that's a perfectly natural response to have because the brain is trying to find a way out but it's trying to find a way out based on past experiences so it wasn't until i was started journaling and journaling about you know how I was feeling, what the experiences were, and thinking about how, okay, what else has happened in my life where I can connect the dots and start to understand why I'm behaving the way it is that I am behaving. So I've never been diagnosed with post-traumatic stress, but I will be very, very surprised if I don't have some of the symptoms of post-traumatic stress. I haven't been given the label, been given lots of other labels, but not <laughs> post-traumatic stress. But I think I, <laughs> I think if I go down that route, I will find that I've definitely had some of the symptoms because I've had a, tra a crazy childhood. So when something stressful happens like that, and it's out of my control, I start to slip back into, I become emotionally triggered and I start to go into this, this loop of self-destructive behavior. I don't even know I'm in it. I don't even know I'm in it. I, I knew that something wasn't quite right because of all of the work that I've done over the last couple of years, but I didn't I couldn't quite, didn't quite realize I was in that hole until I started journaling. Crazy, hey? Absolutely crazy. Also, I don't know whether dyslexia has something to do with it, whether we process things differently, but or whether I'm just human. <laughs> Phew. 
one and then I got emotionally triggered, <laughs> which I think is, is more like it. Yeah, so the journaling process that I use is it really helps me very quickly, very fast identify what the emotional trigger is, how to release that emotion so I can get myself back on track emotionally very quickly so I'm not reacting from past experiences and to create a new belief system around okay what is it I need to believe because I'm basing my behavior on my past past on traumatic events how can I get away from that quickly so how can I create healthier beliefs around what is happening and what steps can I take to help me manage the situation positively rather than you know letting it all consume me being emotionally triggered and letting the whole thing just completely consume me consume consume me <laughs> so I'm not stuck in that emotional <laughs> loop I call it the emotional vortex, vortex where you just get sucked in and lose yourself until you can find out what it is that has emotionally triggered you. So I wanted to share that with you because that is a raw, real life experience of an event that happened to me a couple of days ago where I got emotionally triggered, didn't realize what was going on. I wanted to share the impact that had on me. So maybe you can see if you are getting emotionally triggered by something, if you can relate to what it is that I am saying. If you can, drop in the comments box below. That would be awesome. If you've got any questions, if you've got any questions about conscious self-coaching, pop those below in the chat box. That would be absolutely awesome. I'd be more than happy to answer any questions for you and until next time remember if you enjoyed this video if you've got some knowledge and insight from it if it's been helpful please do press the subscribe button and the notification bell so you can get up and coming insights of my crazy world <laughs> take care gorgeous